Okay, hi. Um, this will be Dr. Anthony J, Nutrition Hero number five. And I'll show you his book. His book is called Estrogeneration, to be like estrogen generation. He's a PhD. He's very smart. He's very funny. I like him. Um, this is a little bit unusual for making him a nutrition hero because when it comes to nutrition, I actually think he's not that good at nutrition. He's young. And you can forgive a young guy. I'm gonna, I don't know his age. I'm going to guess he's around 40, early 40s. Because um, the young guys, you know, they're still caught up into this. As soon as a guy hits puberty, I think the way men are designed, they hit puberty, they want to go with the older men, the teenage young guys, so they want to be strong and have big muscles. And it's programmed into their brains. They have to eat meat to be big and strong. So he's still got a little bit of paleo about his nutrition ideas, which I think is just ignorance. But he'll grow out of that, I'm sure. Okay, but the reason why, why do I think he's worth knowing about? Why do I think his book is actually great? Is because he has a PhD in biochemistry and he's very smart about estrogen chemistry. And he also is very good at explaining things. He's clever, he's funny. So I, I really recommend you either buy his book and watch his book, or you don't have to buy the book, you just watch the videos for free at his, uh, at his uh, YouTube channel. His YouTube channel is Dr. Anthony J. And his videos are quite good. He tells you the truth. Um, he's not BSing you. He doesn't work for some company or anything as far as I'm aware. Uh, so, um, I think he's worth studying and I, I've read a whole bunch of books on estrogen chemistry. Estrogen chemistry is an important subject. It's actually easy to learn. Um, and he's the best introduction to the subject. The other authors tend to be more serious about the biochemistry, more technical. They write in that typical technical boring style, whereas he writes his book, this book is friendly style and anybody can understand it. You don't need a, uh, to have a science background even to understand it. So it prepares you that if you want to learn more about estrogen chemistry, you get the gist of it from him. Okay, got to go to the next slide here. Um, there's a real nice summary chart of the main estrogenics. Uh, let's see where it is here, and that's good. What I like about it, it's on page 13, he gives you the main categories of estrogen chemicals. And that's important because there's a lot of them to keep track of. I remember I was reading about Mendeleev and how he made the first periodic table, and I got this idea I could make a periodic table of estrogenics, but it was too all over the place. It didn't fit into a periodic table. Um, there's just some good categories. The way he puts them into categories are estrogens that come from plants, Estrogens that come from fungi, estrogen that come from herbicides, estrogens in sunscreens, estrogen in food dyes, uh, preservatives as estrogens, the phthalates, which are kind of ubiquitous, uh, the BPA, plastic type estrogens, and phthalates are part of the plastic uh, version as well. And then other estrogens, things like, you know, birth control pills. So nice categories, workable, doable. Um, so let's see, I mean, these estrogens are very serious. What happens is each one by themselves might be a minor exposure, but together people are exposed to tremendously high concentrations of estrogen, really high. So these increase the risk of breast cancer in a woman, also endometrial cancer. They'll increase the risk in a man of prostate cancer. The male prostate is very similar to the female breast in terms of its hormonal sensitivities. Um, you know, some of these, these estrogenic chemicals are very powerful like the atrazine can transform male frogs. It's been described, he describes it as a chemical castration, kind of a scary term there, huh? Um, and I actually think everybody should know the basic of estrogen chemistry. You know, the classic one, you probably heard me talk about this before, is deodorant, you know? Rubbing deodorant in one's armpit. The typical deodorant is gonna have aluminum, a metalloestrogen, which increases proliferation of breast ductal cells and the parabenzoic acids, which mimic the benzene ring with a hydroxyl group being a phenol group component of estrogen, the chemical itself, such that they activate the estrogen receptors. And you got shared lymphatics between the armpit and the breast, increasing the risk of uh, the transdermal absorption of the estrogen, because it's a lipid, okay? Cholesterol is on a cholesterol backbone, all steroid hormones are. So skin is primarily lipid. It's designed to keep water out. It's not designed to keep lipids out, which means fatty substances. So this is absorbed transdermally, especially if the person shaves first and they get increased transdermal absorption. The lymphatics between the breast and the armpit are shared, thus increasing the risk of breast carcinoma. It is thought and the incidence of breast carcinoma in the upper outer quadrant has increased. It used to be about 
20, 30%. That broader quadrant's a little bigger than the other quadrants of the breast, and now it's thought to be about 60%, 55 to 60%. Um, so that's one example. And then the other thing is lots of people are always putting sunscreen on themselves to go out in the sun. You don't need sunscreen. Just go out in the sun and don't stay out so long would be my advice rather than trying to be at the beach all day. Um, what else? All these moisturizers, cosmetics, they very often will have. It's routine for them to have estrogenic preservatives. Shampoos will have estrogenics in them. Detergents for your dishes. Uh, laundry detergents. So, by the way, what am I saying here? The more you study estrogen chemistry, the more convinced you'll become to be a minimalist. My rule of thumb is try to be like Adam and Eve, but with indoor plumbing and indoor heating. It's nice to have an indoor place to live with heating and plumbing and stuff. But other than that... If Adam and Eve couldn't eat it, you probably shouldn't eat it either, okay? You, and you shouldn't be, they didn't rub stuff on themselves constantly all day long. Um, the, you, you can't get away from these preservatives. The reason is they prevent mold from growing in the cosmetic or the cream or whatever it might be, such that they're always going to be there. You know, these chemicals are worth billions of dollars. The companies are never going to stop making them. Even if one of them gets banned, that's a joke. They'll just substitute one little hydroxyl group or something on it and they'll, they'll put it out the next day. So, you can forget about the world changing. You have to change yourself, you know, be more with it to uh, survive all these uh, you know, chemical toxins that we're exposed to on a routine basis. But estrogen chemistry, I'll tell you, it's easy to understand and it's easy to avoid. Um, yeah, I usually make a mess out of my books with all these post-its and stuff. Um, I don't have a great way to draw with my current system other than on a separate program, but I should have drawn estrogen for you. If you just look up estrogen, type it into your browser, estrogen chemical structure, you'll see it's a steroid background, a backbone with four rings, and in the lower corner there'll be a benzene ring with three double bonds that resonate amongst all those carbons such that it provides incredible shelf life stability of years whereby the electrons in those carbons can run through all six carbons so it has great stability and the hydroxyl coming off the side of the benzene ring is uh, uh, antimicrobial so that's why it's great preservative companies love it because it provides great shelf life for their chemicals their moisturizer and all these other things and it's antimicrobial so no mold grows in their product it doesn't get returned back to them Oh, and another thing, they don't cover this stuff in standard medical textbooks. Regular doctors and other people with PhDs, unless they did it in biochemistry, they don't know about this. Um, so, again, the categories are nice. Uh, knowing about estrogens in food here, one thing. I had a couple other lectures on estrogens, but real quick, basically, your liver is up here in the right upper quadrant. Your body excretes estrogens by conjugating them with glucuronic acid. They're passed into the bile, then we defecate them out. If you eat a meat diet, the meat-related bac bacteria will have glucuronidase enzyme to deconjugate the, the conjugated estrogens such that once the estrogen is no longer conjugated, it tends to be reabsorbed into the body, so meat eaters have higher estrogens. Um, in addition, a lot of times the water, drinking water, municipal water filtration, their goal is to prevent acute infections. So what they do is they put something like chlorine in there to sanitize the water, pre prevent bacteria from growing in it. But they don't do much to filter out the estrogen. There can be you know, significantly high and multiple estrogens in your drinking water. You would be amazed at how much there could be. And this could include herbicides like atrazine. It could include BPA. It could include uh, ethyl estradiol type from birth control pills and multiple other ones. So person could really be ramping up your estrogen in your body the estrogen normal estrogen levels should only be something like 20 picograms in a, in a man and 20 to 400 in a woman but man they can get up in the thousands with all these exogenous estrogens so it can become rather complicated and kind of like set your metabolic system going haywire um so let's see what else um, sunscreen estrogenics, again, that's one of those things like everyone says, well, of course you're supposed to wear sunscreen. No, not really. You don't need to. I never wear it. Uh, I just wear it. If I'm going to be out a long time, I'll put a sombrero on or some long sleeve shirt or something. Um, there's, there's several different uh, estrogenics in sunscreen, which can be rather significant. Food dyes, yeah, you shouldn't be eating processed food, you know, and you shouldn't feed that to your kid either. Besides them routinely often containing estrogenic chemicals. They'll contain chemicals that are associated with cognitive problems, attention deficit, etc. You want to just, again, keep it simple. Um, and then like BPA is a perfect example. It'll never go away because BPA molecule 
in the center of it, there's like four carbons. Okay, so even if BPA is banned, they're just going to substitute out a sulfate group or something else for the methyl groups, and the outer component is still going to be a phenol group. It's still going to be estrogenic. Um, so anyways, um, Anthony J is a great teacher to get you going with uh, estrogens. Don't listen to him if he says anything about the paleo diet, but on the subject of estrogen, I think he's fantastic. He's the best introduction to the subject. Uh, when you get interested in more advanced uh, stuff on estrogen, um, I think the Neil Bernard book about balance your hormones is quite good. Um, and he's also got video lectures on his hormonal stuff. And that's all you need to know. Um, I actually read a couple you know, biochemistry textbooks of estrogen chemistry. I was so fascinated by it. And the bottom line I got is be afraid of it and stay away from it as much as you can. You don't want to end up with breast cancer or prostate cancer. Plus, besides breast cancer and prostate cancer, estrogens in abnormally high amounts can potentially cause all kinds of problems. They increase obesity. They, they activate the P power gamma switch to make you want to store, bait, store weight because your brain thinks you're pregnant, if you will. And so you need to store weight, gain weight for the baby. The baby might need those nutrients and that energy at some time down the road. So once a person's fat, they start releasing more free fatty acids into their blood, spillover effect, for example. They're predisposed to become diabetic. Diabetics are increased risk for cancer of, any, of, of multiple different types. Their metabolism screwed up. They're predisposed to become hypertension. So you start going in multiple negative uh, directions when your estrogen levels are high. Um, and testosterone will typically become decreased. Uh, physical strength will be decreased when testosterone is decreased. It's all a bunch of things you don't want. And so you just have to be intelligent and avoid it. And you, you have to think about these things as serious problems that are easily avoided, though, versus what I know so many people do. This is actually the majority of people I know, even, you know, physician friends. They just go, well, that's what everyone does. Well, I could care less what everyone does. The average person over 50 in this country is not doing well. They're overweight. They're often pre-diabetic with all these problems. So you don't want to be average. You want to be the best you can be. And this stuff is easy to avoid. You read about it. And, and like, what are some things I do to avoid these estrogens? For example, I just rinse my dish in the sink. I don't put it through the dishwasher. You don't need a dishwasher. I never had a dishwasher until I got married. You know, and that was the wife's thing, okay? Uh, I just rinse the plate off. Okay, what about laundry? I don't use laundry detergent. Laundry detergent's got multiple estrogen in it. There's the plastic container, typically made out of BPA, conditioned with phthalates. And then the laundry detergent's typically something like non-oxonal 9. That's three estrogens right there. Okay, and then the little dryer uh, th sheets you put it on, some people do in the dryer, those are, have estrogens in them as well. There's four estrogens. Well, it's been traditional in other countries, just boil your laundry. So I just put it on hot, maximum duration. And that's my laundry. Do you like my clothes get a little messed up? Maybe. And by the way, I need to get a new shirt. This one's got a little yellow on the collar. But from that's from iron, I think. But anyways, what am I saying is you can avoid almost all the stuff. No sunscreen, no moisturizer. You don't need deodorant. When you see somebody, you go, hey, how you doing? You don't sniff their armpit. Um, and the rest of them are easy to avoid too. Filter your water, at least a carbon uh, filter. I recommend a whole house carbon filter and a kitchen reverse osmosis filter. And... Um, Okay, we'll leave it at that. Hope that helps.